this session we are going to learn about evaluation rubric now what are the different ways in which we evaluate our learners typically tests or exams are conducted for learners in which uh, the learner usually get a test paper where there are lots of uh, questions given in it there are multiple choice questions short answer question essay type questions such questions are asked wherein the learner uses his or her own knowledge and answers those questions now of course these questions are based on learning objectives so one of the ways in which we evaluate our, our learners is using test but how do we evaluate the skills of the learner using which they can produce some product or they can show some kind of a performance they can present how do we evaluate such skills of the learners now for that we could ask the learners to produce some kind of a product for example they could make a presentation or they could make a working model they could teachers who are practicing teachers or teachers to be they could prepare session plans or teaching aids or learning aids they can design different charts or books so these are different kinds of products that the students can produce which actually the skills which are needed to produce such products cannot be tested using a written pen and paper test so usually the or ideally the evaluation of the learner should be divided across two parameters one is based on the knowledge which they have gained and which could be tested using usual tests and the skills that they have possessed during the teaching learning processes using which they can create some products now how do we evaluate these products because pen and paper tests they are very easy to evaluate the questions are given if they answer the questions correctly you give them marks and that's the end of it but the products can be different in the sense that each and every learner can prepare a different kind of a product for example if teachers who are studying or the teachers to be if these teachers if these students are asked to prepare some teaching aid or learning aid and of course all the students would take different topics the skills that they have possessed would be different the material that they would use would be different the learning objective would be different because uh, obviously the content is going to be different for each and every student now based on these every product that each and every student is going to generate is going to be different so then how do we evaluate such products which are very different from each other we need to apply some basic criteria to these products let's understand the procedure of creating any evaluation rubric let's take a look at this example first to begin with we need to list out the criteria and the sub criteria that we are going to consider to evaluate any kind of a product let's take an example of a session plan here the criteria that we could have for evaluating a session plan could be learning objectives use of strategies activities for formative evaluation activities for summative evaluation the timing that is the time that is allocated for each and every explanation use of implementation of strategies formative as well as summative evaluation so whether the entire lesson plan is timed properly or not that also needs to be checked these would be our list of criteria now how do we decide the sub criteria in this case let's take an example of use of strategies here now to assess the strategies we could have sub criteria within strategies which could be appropriateness of strategy the time allocated to execute that strategy the time allocated to conduct that strategy in the class the material that is prepared which supports that strategy sufficiency of those material whether the instructions for executing that strategy are given appropriately with absolute clarity such sub criteria could be listed out under the main criteria of strategy likewise we could break up each and every criteria into sub criteria we need to consider here that there is no point in forcibly breaking any criteria into sub criteria there could be some criteria which don't need to be broken they are plain and simple and doesn't include much but it is a very important criteria such criteria could be considered just as a criteria and need not be broken up into sub criteria the next step of creating a rubric is deciding the scale based on the proficiency included in the criteria we could have grading of a criteria now with respect to let's say writing of a learning objective 
either the learning objective could be absolutely perfect which is suitable for the time given suitable for the content and achievable so with what clarity the learning objective has been given so it could be absolutely excellently drafted so which the proficiency of that could be absolutely excellent there could be some grades in the or the shades of learning objective where the learning objective is appropriately drafted but the scope is pretty wide it is not limited or that learning objective could not be achieved in the time period which is specified maybe 35 minutes the learning objective could be kind of correctly drafted but the verb is not an action verb it's a verb which cannot be measured so a learning objective we can understand that what the student tries to communicate using the learning objective but is not using a correct verb then the marks that you would allocate to that would be lesser and the last grade or last proficiency of performance could be that it's absolutely wrongly drafted it's not correctly drafted at all so these are the different shades of learning objective that you can see so in order to measure these we need to have scale which we can allocate to these performances now for every criteria we cannot have a different scale for entire rubric for a whole rubric we need to set a scale this scale could be a three point scale it could be a four point scale it could be a five point scale it is not a hard and fast rule but usually it is recommended that you should not take a scale which is less than three pointer and more than five pointer because it is always observed that within three and five pointer scale we are able to measure the performance correctly longer the scale it becomes difficult to assess that performance because the difference between the two subsequent performances becomes very less so the scales could be excellent good and average or it could be excellent good average and below average it could be excellent proficient adequate limited this list is not exhaustive depending on the kind of product you are assessing your scale the words that you are using for your scale would differ they would definitely change the next step is scoring we have decided the scale or the descriptors that we are going to give or the words that we are going to use to describe the proficiency the scale now we need to score that scale also because if it is a excellent performance how many marks am i going to award if it is a poor performance or an average performance how many marks am i going to award to that performance that is decided by the scale you take for the evaluation rubric while scoring each and every criteria may not have set number of marks if you compare the marks that you allocate for learning objectives they are going to be little lesser as compared to the marks you would allocate to use of correct strategy because learning objective although it leads the entire session the marks could be little lesser in the sense that it is just one single statement which of course is leading the entire lesson but it is one statement where a strategy would have lot of sub criteria because appropriateness the time given the material generated the clarity of instruction all these are the sub criteria of using a strategy so strategy naturally would require more number of marks as compared to the statement of the learning objective so based on the criteria based on the weightage of the criteria that you are deciding you can allocate the marks to it and the sub criteria or the list of sub criteria that we prepare helps us to allocate these marks to the criteria after we are done with the listing of criteria sub criteria scale and score the next thing is the most important part of rubrics which is writing the descriptors of that as you can see usually in a vertical column we have a list of criteria and sub criteria and in horizontal row we have the scale now the intersection of that or the cells which are formed by intersection of these rows and the columns this is a place where we write the descriptors now these descriptors or these are the descriptions of the performance of the learner that we are looking forward to let's take an example of a learning objective to understand the importance of descriptors now when will we say that the learning objective is excellently drafted when the learning objective is measurable it is clear it is using the correct verb it is absolutely appropriate for the content that is taken and the performance that is given in the learning objective is also absolutely perfect 
it is this when we will say that the learning objective is excellently designed so under the criteria of excellent we will have this description written about it so likewise for each criteria for each performance we need to write description let me tell you it is not very easy to write these descriptions it takes a little bit time it needs a lot of thought given to it because when you decide how are we going to differentiate between poor and average performance that is a time when your skills of thinking and when your skills of what exactly you are looking forward to in the learner's performance comes into picture how do we create a rubric how do we create a rubric let's take an example of an essay when we evaluate essays of a learner we could set criteria like this flow of ideas articulation of thoughts progression of events language proficiency and grammar now of course all these five criteria can be broken up into further sub criteria but very clearly language proficiency could be broken up into these sub criteria which are vocabulary use of idioms and phrases beauty of language and of course you could come up with more criteria or sub criteria in which you could include in all these five main criteria the scale which you can use for this rubric could be excellent good average and poor of course when all of you see this video when all of you sit with creating this rubric and creating some more criteria you could definitely have more number of criteria you could decide upon a different scale altogether it just depends on you and depends on how much you can think of what is it that you're looking forward to in a essay which is written by your student in order to understand the marking it's a simple calculation that we apply over here it is quite possible that you allocate four marks for each of these criteria so you have five criteria and you have four grades so your entire evaluation rubric could be of 20 marks with four marks allocated to each and every criteria of course this is what i would recommend you but when you sit to create a rubric you could have more number of marks allocating to it you could have different criteria that you are listing out and different sub criteria also on your screen you can see an example of an evaluation rubric which is created by us go ahead and enjoy creating such rubrics for all different kinds of products that you will be asking your students to make with this we have come to the end of the session related to evaluation rubrics thank you